keep them out of light, especially sunlight. Don't ever get them wet. Keep them away from water. But the most important thing, the thing you must never forget, no matter how much they cry, no matter how much they beg, never, never feed them after midnight. I'm not sure how the movie trailer guy does that voice. Um, just saying that just killed my throat. I'll probably be feeling that in the morning. Um, but with those words, I now declare it Gremlins Week on my channel. I will have a brand new Gremlins video for every day of the week this week. So stay tuned. Why is it Gremlins Week? Well, Nika have just released to shops a whole new batch of Gremlins figures. So I figured that would be perfect opportunity to dust off some of my older Gremlins figures, review them, discuss some of my Gremlins custom action figures, and then also unpackage and review the new Gremlin action figures that I've picked up. And today I'm going to discuss Nika's Gremlins based on the first movie. Gremlins, of course, from 1984. Nika's effort here, of course, is much more recent than that. Not quite sure on the year, but I would guess kind of early 2000s. This here is, of course, Stripe. Stripe was the first Mogwai offspring to originate from Gizmo's back. Stripe becomes the leader of the evil Gremlins and features a distinguishing white striped mohawk on top of his head. Stripe has an extreme hatred of Gizmo and conspires to create more gremlins for his evil army. That's me reading from the card back for this figure. And as with all Nika figures, it has the great likeness that we come to expect from Nika. Really looks like the figure from the movie. And as with Nika... There is somewhat limited articulation to this. If you're a kind of articulated comic book artist who likes to um, throw your figures into all kinds of funky and funny poses, you're not really going to be able to do that too much with a figure like this. has just articulation at the hips there. Exposing the underfoot detail there. That's something that most toy companies would neglect. I mean, obviously you're going to be standing a figure on its feet, so most um, toy companies don't give the underfoot any regard, but Nika there have done some detailing to the underfoot there. So articulates at the hips. It does go up and down at the shoulder there. Kind of 360. Yep, yeah, 360. Upper arm. Elbow has a kind of 360 swivel. And then his head, there is kind of a ball joint rotating there. Oh, doesn't he look manic? <laughs> and if I just set him to one side, we can see the evolution of toy manufacturing here. If I bring in this guy. So I said, this gremlin, I think... From the early 2000s was first released, although it has had a couple of re-releases from Nika. But this guy here I just brought in is from 1984, his stamped on his back. So this toy here accompanied the original release of the movie. So you can kind of compare the two, you can see how toys have evolved over the past how many years is that 1984 i'll quickly do the math quickly in my head blah 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 16 27 years now the vintage guy here not really an action figure as he features no articulation um he's just a kind of solid vinyl figure this is by a toy company now defunct called LJN. 
um, LJN as a company are probably better remembered for producing the Thundercats action figures. Um, but beyond the Thundercats, they did kind of these solid vinyl figures. They also did similar vinyl figures for the World Wrestling Federation. I think this stripe here came in a multi-pack with Gizmo and Stripe in Mogwai form. But, um, I mean, obviously it's nothing compared to... Um, the modern counterpart, but still it's pretty decent looking for the time really. Let's bring Stripe back in. Now Stripe came with a whole bunch of accessories. We got a bag of popcorn and various bars of candy really. Um, one of my favourites of which being Coco Yums. I assume these are just candy names that um, Nika have made up. Correct me if I'm wrong, I've never heard of any of them anyway. Chompers. Freakies. Nukes. Zing. And of course, everybody loves milk balls, don't they? So Stripe came with all those to feast on, quite the bounty. Also came with this menacing looking buzz saw blade for him to um, terrorise Gizmo with. There from the card back there you'll see they also released a Gizmo figure. Gizmo as you see came with his Mogwai fur balls and 3D glasses as he wore in the movie. I'm not really a big Gizmo fan, to be honest. I'm much more of a fan of the Gremlins. But beyond Gizmo, we also got... the poker-playing Gremlin. Now, if this poker-player Gremlin looks familiar to you, it's because he is from exactly the same mould as Stripe except he doesn't have a white piece of faux fur glued to his head. For these two, it's like looking in a mirror. This is what Jedward would look like if they were gremlins, which they kind of are, aren't they? Um, as you can see on the chest there, they are decorated. The paint application is different on them. I'm not sure how much that varies figure to figure. It's definitely distinct between the two of these here anyway. So the poker play gremlin of course came with his visor there that you see and also comes with the ace of spades tucked behind his ear. There is a peg on the card that fits into the hole, a hole in the back of the gremlin's ear. Nice touch there, the um, Ace of Spades has an Ica written on it. Shameless promotion on their part really, I mean I've already bloody bought their toy. What more do they want? And the poker player, his accessory, he came with a hand of cards there, which they sort of fit in his hand. And a whole pile of poker chips, popcorn, and, um, gosh, what do you call those cookie biscuit things? Oreos. <laughs> anyway, that Stripe poker playing gremlin and the vintage Stripe successfully showed off by me as part of day one of Gremlins Week here. Stay tuned for tomorrow's instalment. And as ever, please don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. And I will see you tomorrow, hopefully.